wild about animals. First, animal boulders. We'll explore some of nature's finest homes. Next, goonie birds. Let's join these birds for flying lessons. Dolphins. Find out how these playful animals speak to each other underwater. And animal disguises. Can you find the animals? Catch them if you can. In our final segment, bison, we'll roam North America's Great Plains with these grand animals. Segment 1, Animal Boulders. Around the world, thousands of creatures are busy at work, designing and building their perfect home. The beaver is one of the best builders in the animal kingdom. If the beaver cannot find the perfect home, it will make its own home. Beavers are master builders. Beavers make their homes out of wood. They create underwater doors to their homes by building dams. The dam keeps the water level high. Beavers can hide safely in their home from all attackers that can't swim. And for those that can swim, they are better off staying away. Beavers have very strong teeth. A beaver can use its strong teeth to chop down a tree. It doesn't take long to chew through a young tree, but a bigger tree may take more time and more beavers. Beavers are able to close the backs of their throats. This allows them to carry sticks in the water without drowning and chew on wood without choking. Beavers like to eat some of the trees, the rest they use to build their homes and dams. This may look like a tree, but a beaver would never touch it. That's because it's really a mound of dirt built by termites. Many termites. These are not the same termites that are found in people's homes. These are called mound building termites, and they can build mounds up to four meters high. These termites use all sorts of things to build their homes, soil, droppings, saliva from their mouths, and even bits of dead termites, nothing goes to waste. Inside the mound, there are many tunnels. Air flows through these tunnels, and the temperature inside stays comfortable. The tall mound also protects the termite nest below from hungry intruders looking for a tasty snack. creatures' homes are built on the ground. In some parts of Africa, small birds, called weaver birds, build homes that hang from tips of tree branches. They use only their beaks to build these complicated nests, far out of reach from most enemies. Weaver birds make their nests by tying long strands of grass into knots. It can take an entire week to complete just one nest. Male weaver birds often build nests just so they can show off their skills and attract female weaver birds. But the female weaver bird is very fussy. She only likes a fresh green nest and if she thinks the male weaver bird did a poor job, she will ignore him. So if the male hasn't attracted a female by the time his nest turns brown, he has to start all over again. While weaver birds build homes with just one room, honeybees build honeycombs made of many little rooms or cells. Each cell in the honeycomb is very strong and is used for many things, such as for storing pollen, honey, water, and for raising the worker bee eggs. The cells are made of wax, which the honeybees make in large amounts. 
Wax is easiest to shape at a temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. So some of the bees spend their time keeping the hive temperature exactly right. When it gets too hot inside the honeycomb, they cool the air by fanning their wings at the same time. For bees, teamwork is important to keep their home running smoothly. Everywhere you look, animals are making their perfect home. These are nature's builders. Segment 2, Goonie Birds. The albatross is the largest flying seabird in the world. They are among the most spectacular gliders of all birds able to stay in the air for hours at a time without ever flapping their long, narrow wings. Although albatrosses are graceful in the air, they are very clumsy on land. These strange-looking birds are sometimes called goonie birds for their duck-like walk and funny behavior. Goonie means clumsy. Only two kinds of albatross are nicknamed goonie birds. The lysen, named for its home, Lysen Island, and the black-footed, named for its black feet. Every fall, thousands of goonies fly to an island to nest. They don't seem to mind their human neighbours, even though it can get a bit crowded. Goonie birds' nests are not fancy or particularly comfortable. All they need is a shallow hole in the ground to be happy. Nest material is either flown from nearby or borrowed from a neighbour. In mating season, the birds spend weeks looking for the perfect partner. It might look silly to us, but the goonie dance is very important for these birds. Goonies mate for life, so this is a big decision. Goonie bird parents take turns sitting on a single egg for about two months. Then they help the baby goonie break free from its protective shell. The baby goonie will stay in the small nest for the next 165 days. But when the baby is two weeks old, both parents take off for weeks at a time to find food. Back at the nest, the chick waits and waits and waits for their return. Finally, the starving youngster is rewarded with a healthy meal straight out of its parents' stomach. When goonie birds are almost six months old, they lose their fluff and grow feathers. It's time for flying lessons to begin. Like any beginner, the young goonies practice on the ground first. Learning to fly takes time. It's not as easy as it looks. Even with their large wings, it's difficult to get off the ground. And once they get into the air, they need to work out how to get back down again. This too is not easy. Plenty of practice, they know how to land. Well, most of the time. Goonie 
birds are fun to watch. Even though they look clumsy on the ground, they are proud and graceful in the air. Goonie birds may not be so goony after all. Segment 3 Dolphins To humans, the underwater world can seem a very quiet place. But for dolphins, it's full of sound. Their own sound. Dolphins make sounds underwater. Along with whales and porpoises, dolphins use sound to find food, find each other and raise their young. Dolphins can't smell and although they have good eyesight, sometimes it's tough to see in the cloudy water. So dolphins find their way around by using a form of communication called echolocation. Dolphins use an echo to locate objects underwater. They do this by making a noise that sounds like a click. These clicking sounds are produced through the rounded part of their forehead, called the melon. Echolocation works like this. A dolphin makes the clicking sound in its forehead. When these clicks hit an object, they bounce off of it and return to the dolphin in the form of echoes. Dolphins use these echoes to figure out what the objects look like and how far away they are. The sound can travel for long distances in water, as far as 300 meters away. Dolphins can learn and recognize the echoes of their favorite kinds of food. They can tell the size, shape, speed, distance and direction of a fish just by clicking. Sometimes loud clicking can shock a fish so much that it won't move. So the dolphins will use this opportunity to circle the scared fish and eat it. It's a great way to find food. In fact, fishermen often look for dolphins to find where the fish are. Dolphins live in groups called pods. The size of a pod can be anywhere from 2 to 25 animals, but often hundreds of pods will travel together from place to place. So in order to recognize each other within such a large group, each dolphin develops its very own sound. It's called a signature whistle, and it's just like having your own name. Dolphins can call out the signature whistles of other dolphins as if they're calling each other by name. Males usually form whistles that sound a lot like their mother's whistle. But females, on the other hand, create their own special sounds. They do this so their babies don't confuse mother with grandmother. It's not hard to get separated in the large ocean. But with a signature whistle, finding your family is easy. Dolphins use their bodies to talk to each other. For instance, male dolphins will scratch each other to find out who will be the leader. But things usually don't get too rough in the dolphin family. Generally, these animals are very friendly towards each other. Wild dolphins are found in almost all the seas and oceans around the world. Some are captured and studied so we can learn more about them. We are learning that dolphins and humans can communicate through body language and sounds. Like chimpanzees, dolphins can perform many tricks. They can also copy sounds and understand sentences. And that's something the chimps can't do. 
It's no wonder that dolphins are thought to be the smartest animal in the undersea world. They are sweet, they are playful, they are the intelligent music makers of the sea. Segment 4, Animal Disguises. Outdoors can be a dangerous place. Some animals have fangs and claws to protect themselves, but others seem completely helpless. For these animals, it is better to stay out of sight. Many animals use a disguise to help them hide. Trees and other plants are popular hiding places. Is it a twig or is it a praying mantis? This bug hopes to fool hungry hunters with its disguise. Butterflies can hide too. They can look like leaves. Some even have patches of mold on their wings to look like real leaves. This Sumatran horned frog can become almost invisible just by sitting in a pile of dead leaves. He even has marks on his skin that look just like lines on a leaf. But to remain hidden, an animal must keep still. Some animals use a disguise to hide while hunting. You might think that bears are too big to hide. Not all bears. Many years ago, some relatives of the brown bear moved to where it is cold and where there is a lot of snow. Over many, many years, their fur changed from brown to white. Now these polar bears blend in with their snowy home. A polar bear's white fur is a great disguise. Now all the bear needs is to find an animal to hunt. Animals in the sea also use a disguise as a way to survive. This looks like an underwater plant, but it is really a sea creature called the decorator crab. Decorator crabs create their own masks. They find scraps and other junk floating in the seawater, which they attach to their sticky shells. Every day is a party for the decorator crab. This one is dressed for a special occasion. This fish, called a sole, doesn't need a costume. It has a flat body and its skin looks like sand. So if it stays very still, it can blend in nicely with the ocean floor. Some animals use their markings to protect themselves in another way. When a zebra is alone, it can be in danger. But when the herd stands together, all that a hungry wild animal sees is a bunch of stripes and is unable to pick out one animal from the crowd. Like the zebra, butterflies often use color patterns to confuse their enemies. Big blocks of different colors are their disguise. believe that nature uses red and yellow as warning signs of danger. Bright colors on many animals mean that they are poisonous. Some animals that are not poisonous try to look like other animals that are. The coral snake has bright colors. It is highly poisonous. The king snake on the left is completely harmless. But by copying the looks of the poisonous coral snake, it hopes to fool its enemies into thinking that it is poisonous too. Monarch butterflies are not poisonous either, but don't tell their enemies. Their bright colors fool their enemies into thinking that they are poisonous and should not be eaten. The animal kingdom can be a tough and dangerous world. 
So for some animals, it's a good idea to know how to hide. Segment 5. Bison. Nearly 200 years ago, over 60 million bison lived in the United States. These proud animals provided food, shelter and clothing to the Native American people. When explorers travelled west and saw these large animals, they decided they would be good to hunt. The sport almost destroyed the entire bison population. Today, not many bison are left. Bison eat plants. An adult bison can weigh as much as 1,000 kilograms. In order to keep up their large size, the bison must eat and eat and eat. They wander in big groups called herds, chewing their way across the land. Bison are usually gentle and keep to themselves. They won't move unless they have to. This gentle nature lets bison save their energy for when they really need it. If they feel they are in danger, they will fight back. These bison live in a very large park called the Yellowstone National Park, which is in the western United States. Yellowstone National Park has nearly 2,000 bison. This is the last free grazing herd in the United States. The only other American bison live in zoos. the bison know how to survive these harsh winters. During bad weather, they turn their furry front towards the wind to block the rest of their body from the cold. Bison walk straight into a storm rather than stand still. This way the storm quickly passes over them. Their thick, dark fur also acts as a heater. The dark colour attracts the available winter sunlight, which helps the bison keep warm. But when the weather becomes even too cold for them, sometimes they will take a walk over to some nearby hot springs. With icicles hanging off their heads, the warm water feels good. So they take their time and relax before they make their next move. The hot springs give the bison a needed break from the cold, but there is still very little to eat. Soon the bison are hungry and must leave to search for some grass. Their neighbours, the elk, give up eating grass and drink only water through the winter. But the bison need more than water to survive so they use their strong neck and shoulders to dig through the deep snow to get to the grass below. This is hard work. Some do not survive the winter. The snow has melted. It is springtime across the plains. Every year, between April and June, new calves are born. After only a few days, baby bison develop a strong relationship with the herd. Baby bison like